Today, crypto markets plummet as Russia launches an all-out invasion of Ukraine. FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried explains how automatic trading could deepen the sell-off. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. All eyes are on Ukraine after Russia began its full-scale attack of the country overnight. For the latest updates on all that's happening in the region, you can head over to CNBC.com. The conflict is spooking crypto investors who are turning away from risky assets. The overall market tumbled more than 7% by noon Eastern. Bitcoin fell 7% and dipped below $36,000. Ether took a 10% loss. XRP also fell around 10% to about 65 cents per token. We spoke to BKCM's Brian Kelly and Arcus Chief Investment Officer Jeff Dorman about what's keeping crypto prices under pressure. You have traditional hedge funds, macro hedge funds, that have been using Bitcoin as a pro-cyclical inflation hedge. And that, that pro-cyclical is key. It means if the economy is doing really well and there's inflation, Bitcoin is your hedge. Now, what's happened is the economy slowed down. The Fed has told you, hey, we're going to try to crush inflation. Therefore, you don't need those hedges. Then add on to it. Now we have Russia and the war in Ukraine. That is likely going to slow the global economy. Um, it will spike. I mean, it already is spiking energy prices and spiking inflation. So then the real question for Bitcoin and crypto, and it's trying to solve that right now with this action, is whether or not that inflation spike is going, to, if Bitcoin's going to be a good hedge for that. Right now, it's really just being used as a 24-7 levered VIX. Um, you know, the, the side effect of everyone cheering about institutional adoption over the last 18 months is that when you have a lot of traditional hedge funds and even some private equity and venture funds in the in the non-digital asset world piling into assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum and even Solana, well, that's the first thing that they're going to sell when you have tensions high because it's 24-7 and it's liquid. So we're seeing a really big decoupling right now. Um, and, and it's really interesting because if you go back two years ago when you had the Iran uh, uh, missile uh, uh, invasion, Bitcoin actually rallied. Now, FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried weighed in on the sell-off via Twitter. He pointed to algorithmic investors who trade Bitcoin based on the performance of the S&P 500. With stocks selling off today, those algorithmic traders are also selling Bitcoin. CNBC's Kate Rooney recently spoke to him about the continued volatility and how that automatic trading could worsen the losses. Joining me now, Sam Bankman-Fried, CEO and co-founder of FTX. Sam, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. I want to ask you about Bitcoin. I mean, we've seen the price now around 38000 It's been a, pr a tough year for cryptocurrencies. Uh, does that factor into your top line? And is a slowdown in Bitcoin prices bad for your business? So, I mean, I think the first answer is just absolutely. Like it does factor into our, 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 our revenue. And, um, you know, in general, I, I think thinking of, of, you know, volume is proportional to price is like a decent first order approximation. Um, and, uh, and so I think that like that drawdown does have impact. It's worth noting that there's also been more volatility, which is, um, pushed a little bit in the other direction. You know, right now, I think our, our sort of like 2022 run rate so far has been slightly higher than our 2021 average, uh, you know, P and L was, um, so, so I think things have still been trending slightly up. Um, but, but I think a lot less growth than we otherwise would have seen. One thing which I think is like relevant to note here, though, is that this is not really a crypto specific move. Um, and, and that's different from some previous times when we have seen crypto acting pretty idiosyncratically. Um, if you look over the last few months, equities are down a lot. Um, and, and I think it's been sort of a, a, a two, um, you know, two major factors. The first and the biggest by far is monetary policy. Um, you know, there are now significant expectations that because of inflation, um, you know, the Fed is going to uh, start to take up interest rates. And, and, and that's going to have, you know, probably pretty big impact um, on, uh, on, on, on what we see. Like, I, I think on the margin, you know, that's, that's just going to be decreasing balance sheets. Um, it's going to be like less buy pressure. It's going to be, you know, effectively, de you know, cause, you know, like curbing inflation in the U.S. dollar. And, um, and, and so I think that's one piece of this. Um, that that I expect to be real, um, and I think the market is pricing quite a bit, and I think that's that's led to a, a big drawdown in crypto. I think it's also led to a big drawdown in equities, especially the sort of growth tech equities 
that had been growing a ton during COVID. Um, the second thing, uh, which is more recent, is just the Ukraine situation, uh, which I think has, has put a lot of fear into markets. Um, I think it's not obvious what the long-term impact of that is going to be on crypto. I, I, I think that, that in particular, you, you could make an argument for why this increases the demand for crypto. And can Bitcoin break away from that correlation if that's the case? If you've got these traders that are really, like you said, a black box, they've got their model and they buy and sell based on some of those macro factors, can Bitcoin get away from that? I mean, is that a, a barrier to Bitcoin decoupling from equity markets? It's a barrier, but it's not a strong barrier. Like it's this kind of thing where like what you sort of expect to happen is imagine that half of all market participants just look at historical data and the other half are sort of like thinking just about macro and and and, and economic fundamentals. The, the first half is still assuming a you know 80% correlation between crypto and equities. The second half, now thinks zero correlation or like isn't even sure what direction the correlation should be in right at the beginning you're still going to see a very positive correlation because you have two parties one of which is running a very positive correlation and the other which is running zero but it might be less positive you, you might see the correlation start to drop to like 60 percent um and then what you'd expect to happen after that is the people running historical studies will update their models right and they'll be like oh interesting like seems like the correlation is decreasing Right. And so their models will have like start modeling lower correlation and uh, and then the empirical correlation will go down because their models are having impact on what happens in the world. And, and you might actually get kind of a snowball where slowly sort of the, the, the observed beta in the market, the observed behavior exponentially basically decays down to sort of like the new fundamental economic expectations over time. I'm not saying that's like exactly what's going to happen, but that's like one model you could have whereby like on a time scale of maybe like six months or so, um, things would update to being more in line with what, uh, you know, with, with sort of like macro thought and less in line with, with sort of like stale historical models. Got it. Okay. Really interesting. It's great to get your perspective on that. And I think there's a lot of people just curious to really what's getting in the way of another Bitcoin bull market. Is there anything else? You mentioned the macro factors and some of this automatic trading that needs to happen before there can be another step function higher for cryptocurrencies. I don't think there's anything that needs to happen, um, but I think there are some things that would help quite a bit. Um, and by far the biggest thing here is, is regulation and in particular, the U.S. regulatory environment. Like if you look at the largest trading institutions, um, what are they waiting for? you know, what are banks waiting for to get involved? I think it's basically entirely clarity on the regulatory side, right? These are institutions which are used to assuming that whatever fees happen, they're going to get the biggest and the first. And, you know, they're going to have the most regulatory scrutiny on them. And they want to be confident that they understand a system before going in perfectly. And so even just sort of like some amount of uncertainty in the regulatory environment is enough to scare them and make them feel not super comfortable getting involved. And I, I think that's a lot of what's going on right now is just like a number of, of institutional players are, are feeling nervous and, and are sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens, um, but would like to get involved and, and will get involved if they feel like they can do so in, in a, a safe way. And, and I think that's going to happen. I think it'll take time, but I think it'll happen. And so, uh, you know, I sort of expect that, like, over the next year or two, there's going to be enough clarity that more institutions will come in. But it's going to be a trickle. It's not going to be a deluge. You're not all going to come at once. It's going to be a long process for them. Uh, but, 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 but I do think that, like, regulatory um, pathways are, are probably the other biggest barrier to adoption right now. And, and again, I'm, I'm optimistic that, that that's going to get better. Before we go, we're also keeping an eye on Coinbase earnings, which come out after the stock market closes shop today. Here's how that company could use the metaverse to fend off a slowdown in trading. Coinbase shares are down today ahead of earnings. The crypto exchange reports after the bell tonight. And share price has been struggling lately. It's down more than 30 percent this year and has been trading below its IPO price. It's also been underperforming Bitcoin prices lately. Fourth quarter results are likely to reflect that lull in crypto markets, which has weighed on investor sentiment 
and trading activity. Wall Street analysts do expect strong trading volume for the fourth quarter, which we'll get tonight, but they are seeing a slowdown in the current quarter, Q1. Its trading volume is publicly available, so a lot of that tends to be priced in. But the bull case for Coinbase is in its role in what some are calling the bank of the metaverse. And Coinbase really leaning into some of the financial services beyond just crypto trading. And for many, this is a multi-year investment. Analysts are looking for growth beyond trading revenue and things like custody side of the business, lending, something called staking as well, and action on the institutional side of that business. That's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. So we'll see you then.